Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was huge. Yeah. So like a baseball bat or something like that. Yeah. Strong elbow. <laughs> the people's baseball bat. <laughs> a little tender feels mm -hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I jump up and down or do something jumping or sneezing or laughing, I'll get, get a little little vibration. Okay. A little vibration, a little thing down my hands. Not okay. huge, a little one. Okay. And then I get a lot of kinks in this neck. I need to loosen this up. Okay. Um, the kinks. So you had an MRI of your lower back. Did they ever take a picture of your neck? Was anybody interested? Nobody. No, actually, the neck is kind of a new thing. It's like a new two-year thing. Okay. Just started for the past maybe one or two years. Okay. I'm gonna, before we keep going on the other ones, I'll go, sort of go through that symptom. When you increase interabdominal pressure, so when you're when you're increasing, when you grunt or you know uh, strain, or even when you're jumping, the pressure of the disc increases just a tiny bit. And if that disc pressure increases and the disc is uh, already not where it's supposed to be, it can go out and sort of hit the nerve a little bit. And these nerves, if you extended them farther out, they all the way go out from the lower neck down your arm. I expect to see an age-appropriate disc. You understand? I wouldn't. It'd be abnormal to see some discs looking the same as they did when you were 18, right? They haven't aged, and then some discs are older than you are, right? And so that's that uneven aging due to the alignment, right? So just like the alignment of your car tires, if they're not on straight, you're wearing your tire out unevenly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The alignment of the spine not being curved puts extra accelerated stress on the lower neck, and that's what's causing that symptom. Mm -hmm. How can you help me, Dr. Ed? Two ways. We loosen the atlas. The upper mm -hmm. cervical is supposed to be your main engine. So for this area to be under that kind of stress, the upper neck must be doing less than it's supposed to be doing to allow this to be doing extra. So we go in and we loosen up the upper neck, and then we start to aim your spine back into that curved position. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that. IT band, and then you think bursitis down the leg. And this is self-diagnosis. It's okay. Both of those. Okay. <laughs> those are there. Actually, yeah. So, so I have a, I've been having this problem for a long time. So it's real tender here, yes, sir. tender here, 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 super tender here. And then my the IT band comes down, and then sometimes my knee will hurt, and then I'll go right away. And then and then I get it both sides. I even here, and it's right down, even right now. Right. Like that right there. Yeah. It feels like I've been whacked. Yeah. And then you feel down into the feet, so right big toe and ball of the foot is always in pain? Well, that's a different story. I bent that back a lot in college football. Okay. And I've had some people stick needles into the joint to kill it. Okay. So I'll have pain right here and here, and it gets really painful just by driving, not walking, you driving. Think, you think from impact, traumas? I think I've had it bent over a lot over uh -huh. the years. Okay. As I played ball in college also. Okay. So on your MRI, it talks about what they call an anterior listhesis, and that what that refers to is a sliding of the vertebrae. So it's happening at L5. I'm just going to use this so you can see it a little easier. But essentially, the vertebrae are all supposed to be stacked. Um, the back of the vertebrae, the front of the vertebrae should always be lined up. And what they're calling a grade one is between, they call it zero to 25%, that you know the vertebrae is shifted about 25, up to 25% forward of where it's supposed to be. So the holes the nerves go through are made up of one bone from the bottom, makes up like a U-shape, and then the other bone from the top, does that make sense? And that creates the foramen the nerve goes through. So when they're sliding, the idea of that hole becomes smaller than it's supposed to be uh, as, the, as the vertebrae aren't lined up properly. So the ability to hit these nerves increases when there's a sliding force. The, it's most likely, like I said, you said you play sports a lot in high school, college. college. Okay, and so those, are, those would be a trauma. That would be a hit, fall, where the, what they call pars, breaks, and that allows the bone to then slide forward, and then the interaction with the nerve happens. And that's gonna affect, essentially, your whole leg. The, I would say a big part of why you're feeling the glute, thigh, knee. The, my, honestly, though, the, the, believe it or not, it's not always hits, just the car. This may sound strange, but uh -huh. the truck drivers have this problem, I've been told. Uh -huh. You sit in a bucket seat that comes like this, like rubbing against it. Yeah. I've had to do a lot of driving in my career. Yeah. And it's done a toll on these two sides here. Just pressing it on you. And this here it gets compound worse just by driving. So I had to do some driving this weekend, and yeah. it, it compounds worse. And I pull it, and I pop it back in the place, and it gets better. It's tough. What, what we'd have to, what they really should do is do multiple pictures. We should do a picture. They can do motion x-rays, but, or they can do a flexion extension study. We can see how that's moving, you understand? I'd be curious to see how much that changes, you understand, based on if you're upright, if you're, you know, bent forward, 
What the seat does, or even take you, put you exactly in the position when you're in a seating position driving, that this might change. You're saying the position of that might slide worse or you know gets better or worse based on the position you're in. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't move much, then it could be the you know something pressuring in your thigh. It could be the hip. The actual hip joint could need some care. My default is that even the hip socket, if there was bursitis in the hip or the IT band, all of that is under the control of these nerves in the lower back. So my my default is to clean the spine first, see what lingers. If something's lingering, then we start going into the hip and maybe sure. there could be something in the hip. But I think that's a safe approach. Ultimately, the sciatic nerve, which is made up of five nerve roots, mm -hmm. three sacral and two lumbar, supplies 75% of the neurological upkeep of your leg. Meaning if that nerve is hit, then the leg will atrophy, will hurt, pain. And, and the kind of even the nondescript pain, if it hurts in an area, that's more nerve usually. If it's actually the hip, it'd be one spot, you know. If it's kind of an area, it can be more usually that the nerve is, because in nerve control is what we call a dermatome or an area of the skin. So I have a combination of TFL pain here, and then I have QL pain also on occasion, mm -hmm. and, I, and they get to be tighter than the normal person. So you get the combination of QL, TFL, IT syndrome, all that stuff is a, a so little combination. Tensor fascia lata and quadratus lumborum, the muscles are trying to protect, right? When, when you have an injury to a nerve, it's very common. So the quadratus lumborum goes from the iliac crest to the 12th rib up here, mm -hmm. and that muscle will so right about here will hold this area stabilized, almost like a back brace. It's trying mm -hmm. to immobilize. Mm -hmm. um, the TFL is controlled, again, <laughs> by these nerves in your lower back. So when we hit a nerve, it's common for the muscles to get tasered. And so they get tight because we got nerve pressure. And so mm -hmm. disc, pre disc injury occupies the space that shouldn't be occupied by anything. We start hitting this nerve tips high. So your body's in... It's trying to take pressure off the right leg. So when your left hip comes up, the holes the nerves go through on the right get larger. Your body will try to unlevel or you know compensate and move things around to find relief. Yes. Chiropractors get so focused on getting the ear back, but we don't want it to be military either. We want the ear to be over the shoulder and there be a curve in the neck. Because the military neck is still going to suffer from the ladder effect where all the weight, that makes sense, if it's just straight, we still just, we still beat up the lower neck. I got a real flat straight neck right now, right? It's 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 pretty straight. I think you're is not you're little, not is a little too straight, maybe. You're not too fo you're not forward, but we're just straight. Yeah, so in a sense, it's not having that curve, is what you're saying. It's a, it's like an arch. It allows the weight to be evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. So the lower neck, that sensation down in your arms, I would say, is a big part of too much stress going on the lower neck, upper neck being tight. I want your middle back feeling like this. Yeah. I believe that if your middle back was soft and if your upper neck was soft, that the ability to overstress the lower back is very hard to do. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's hard to isolate and damage this if your middle back is supple. Mm -hmm. And the process of taking a middle back, and I'm going to evaluate you in one second, if it's stiff in the middle back, well, that's the reason for why this happened. Because when you were playing football or when, we, when you're sitting in a car, if the middle back is frozen, then it's easy for the lower back to be overstressed. And I believe that the focus should be away from the lower back in leaving it alone in some sense. It's overstressed, it's overworked, and it can't be manipulated into a better position. It just needs to be left alone. Let the jaw relax, let the jaw relax, no sound, just let the air out. There we go, deep breath in, I got you. Deep breath in, I got the chest relax, I got you. Beautiful. Deep breath in. One more. Very good. Uh, exhale. Uh, yeah, you're frozen there. Okay. All right. Not too bad. I want more. Deep breath in. We're going to start up here. Middle back. Exhale. Uh -huh. Good. I got you. Uh -huh. All right. Good. A little bit. Uh -huh. Exhale. Uh -huh. Good. That's all that. Other side for me. Good. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Exhale. Good, peace up for me. All right, way off to the right, okay. Okay, yeah, we gotta get this up here. All right, yeah. yeah, it's actually really tender right there too, you know that? Yes sir, the Something's messed 45 up. degrees of motion each way should initially happen from this joint. 
meaning that the lower neck should not move at all until the upper neck has fully utilized itself. And so the loss of curve inverts the, the mobility, meaning that the lower neck initiates rotation and the upper neck <laughs> ends the rotation. And so we have to restore the suppleness. There shouldn't be any tenderness, no tightness. It's tender there. Yes, it's sir. Yeah. tight and want, tender there. We have to work. Yeah, it's, it's messed up in other words. Yeah. It's Technical. Your main engine <laughs> your main engine needs to be, you know, running properly, meaning that it's it's just effortless for me to ask this to bend. This side's not nearly as tight. No, you can tell. Uh -huh. yeah. You can tell just by yeah. how it feels yeah. when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really easy just this top guy a little bit. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was huge. Yeah. How's the Atlas? Just the Atlas. <laughs> EJ Palmer and what really is Dad Dee Palmer were the first to explain that nerve pressure causes a disease. Before that, osteopathy started by Andrew Still. They believed it was a circulatory problem, that all disease came from poor blood flow. But the circulatory system is still at the mercy of the nervous system. The nervous system controls the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So while, yes, areas that don't have blood flow can cause problems or have problems with them, it's still ultimately the nerves that are the controllers. Mm -hmm. Just this top guy a little bit. Oh, good, 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 yeah. Nice, yeah. Not trying to move every bone. Get the idea? <laughs> We're not trying to, my goal with the neck adjustment is to not simply see how many cracks I can get out of your neck. Mm -hmm. My goal is to adjust this without moving this, right? See, if I adjust what's tight and I adjust what's loose, do you see how I've balanced it? You have a favoritism of tilting your head away from this injury. I would call this an injury right here. It's a, it creates this. Your head tilts left to get away from this um, joint that hurts. We call that antalgia. Anta means away from. Alga means pain. So an antalgic posture is one that's away from pain. Your body tries to find a position of comfort. And this is all subconscious. You don't even, that's, what, that's why I check posture at the beginning, because what your posture shows, it shows where you're leaning away from, right? It shows the areas that your body doesn't want to, mm -hmm. you know, compress or touch or use, utilize. It took chiropractors about 100 years to realize that you can't permanently change the position of a bone by adjusting it. We have to stretch the rubber bands that wrap the spine, called, you know, ligaments. Mm -hmm. There it is, good, yeah, move a little bit more there. And we have to hold your neck in this curved position. And the more time that we uh, place the neck in the curved position, the more your body will retain it. So spinal cord is an extension of your brain attached to your tailbone. When the curves in the spine go straight, the cord is held taut like a rope. And the ability for it to be hit by an anterior listhesis or by a disc vastly increases, if that makes sense, when the, cur when the, when the cord has no give. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So getting the curve in your neck can alleviate lower back pain or lower back symptoms. That makes sense, or leg symptoms. That all is connected because of the total, uh, the, the, the rigidity of the cord is changed by getting the curves back to the spine. So um, again, this is why B.J. Palmer <laughs> focused so much on the neck and they just didn't fully understand that you have to affect the ligaments, that the rubber bands have to be stretched and so essentially the adjustment phase of the of the visit is to make the spine willing to accept the stretch. I'm going to see right there. Some people come in here and I feel like I have to not only f replace the sod, but I have to install an irrigation system. I feel like you're back. All I have to do is just put new sod down. You understand? Yeah, I, I'm, some people I'm, come. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I, just, I really enjoy this. I just have happened to do some crazy things in my life. Yeah, you already have the circulation. The circulation is here. I just need to put new sod down so the grass will grow. See, the arteries have muscles in them. Veins don't, right? Veins have two layers. Muscle, uh, arteries have three layers. That tunica interna, externa, and a tunica media. The media is the muscle. That's how your blood pressure is regulated by your arteries. They dilate or constrict, and that's how your pressure is controlled. And so the, just like a skeletal muscle, that muscle in the artery can atrophy. Mm -hmm. It can weaken, and its ability to push blood into tight regions, that makes sense. If a muscle is really tight, the, the arteries have to push harder mm -hmm. to perfuse the tissue. And so if you have postural spasms or injuries causing tightness, the 
I find that that muscle in the artery doesn't have enough power, and so the area eventually just becomes you know, dirty, let's call it, because <laughs> it can't be cleaned out by the circulatory system. So two ways to fix it. One, reduce the amount of, let's say, stiffness in the area, mm -hmm. making it easier for the blood to get in there, and then two, by working on the area, you stimulate that muscle, strengthen the muscle in the artery. And then this is the thoracic outlet down here, and this is, so we'll work on this more face down in a second, but pushing this rib down, mm -hmm. um, this is a component of how it's easy to hit the wires that go down in your hands. So the more we get this rib down, we'll work on this in a second, put that there. That's the first rib that needs to go down. This, yeah, there's yeah, something weird about this one, that's yeah. The one, it's the one messed up there, right the one there. Pinch. Right there, I can feel, yes. uh, right where you put the finger, that yep. it has like an extra pain right there. Yeah, because you're in right... It's extra painful right there. Because you're in right avoidance, you're pinching this side. The left lower gets pinched because you're avoiding the right upper part of your neck. The left lower is under more compression. Yeah, we got, right. Yes. There was. It's actually. It's actually. Oh well, yeah, right there. Okay, yeah. That's like extra painful. <laughs> He's like, stop touching it. <laughs> That's the spot. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's the spot. It's really the spot because. See, do you see how if we get you, if we get you off the left side, this won't be so inflamed. Mm. It's because of your right avoidance that makes this so upset. Yeah, that's the spot right there. I can feel it all the way to my head. Mm -hmm. I can feel it to my forehead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was trying to compress that, open up this channel a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, real quickly, right where you're, like I said, you're, there's a big bruise right here. I'll, I'll show you, I'll take a picture of it and I'll show it to you. But the soft tissue is inflamed. This is the soft tissue component that needs to be cleaned out. Just for the viewer, I mean, like that didn't hurt when I did that, right? That was pretty easy, right? What's that? This, <laughs> right, exactly. What's that? The, this, the, the blade? The combing, yeah. It doesn't. Nah, the blade's people, all right. Some people will go, "Oh my gosh, you're filleting him!" I'm like, "No, it's it's meant to be pretty gentle." No, no, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, I show your back here. Might be a little shot. That's all right. Right there, that's all. I've been through worse. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Epsom salt would be wonderful if you can soak, I don't know, uh, just either, either a compress, you can take some salt in a cup, put it right on these areas, right in the lower neck, shoulder, or bathtub, but, or you can just do a compress and put like a salt paper towel right over it when you get home. The faster we can get rid of these marks, I'll take a picture in a second and show you, the faster you're going to feel better is this, this bruising in here is at least half of the symptom of why you're feeling that into your fingers is just this bruising in here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, it's, the nerves are traveling, and they're being chemically irritated along with disc. See where the where the neck where the skin creases are also where the vertebrae, yeah. and your neck doesn't bend as much up here mm -hmm. as it wants to bend here. So we're trying. That's why I worked on your upper neck, yeah. and then take the stress off that. There we go. All this soreness has got to be evicted. <laughs> There's no. I'm moving in. This is moving out. No. No soreness in here. My goal is like a trainer to push you without overwhelming you. If I'm going too hard, please let me know it. But I, I am very greedy. No, it's all right. That's okay. tender right in there, though. Okay, I get it. If it's too much, please let me no, know. No, it's all right. It's okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am. I am greedy. Yeah. Are you using your elbow? Yes, or sir. Are you doing? Elbow, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like a baseball bat or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, strong elbow. <laughs> the people's baseball bat. <laughs> there we go.
It's a really tender. Yes, right sir. Yep, yep. All right. Okay, I don't use it tender. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're, you're, you abuse this side because you're in right avoidance. The right side of your neck is being avoided. That all comes from that right atlas. And then your left side is under extra stress. Probably something like 60 40. The left side of your back does, you know, 60% of the work here as the right side's being, you know, avoided. Yeah, right there. Okay. So I guess I'll be sore after this, no? Huh? Uh, or yes. not? <laughs> yes, sir. Any area that isn't moving, that I get moving, is going to not potentially like me very much. It's We restore the functionality to parts of your back that have been offline. It's like muscles that are out of shape and you go to the gym and do a big workout and then those muscles are sore because they're not used to the workout that you put them through. In the same way, these joints haven't been working the way they're supposed to. And as we get them functioning properly, they're going to be a little like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah, it doesn't like the spirit doesn't really hurt as much. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. hmm. Just traditionally, when you've had your heart or blood pressure checked, how how is it usually pretty good? Or they they use My the blood same pressure? Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. The nerves that go to your heart come from right this right in this section here, and so inflammation of the upper back on the left side will cause elevated blood pressure. And our world doesn't connect the dots for people that. The health of the upper back and the health of your heart are connected. Yeah, that, this side compresses so much easier than the other side. We got, we got work to do on that left side. We call it the cardiopulmonary nerve is the net, in anatomy is the nerve that is the sympathetic nerve to your heart. It's made up of nerve roots from the first, second, third, and fourth thoracic nerves on the left side. And so inflammation of that area is going to have the capability of irritating that nerve. And, you know, I, you know, how many people do you know are sore in their upper back? A lot. How many people have high blood pressure? A lot. And so it's not, it's not a coincidence that inflammation in the upper back is common, forward head posture is common, straight necks are common, and that, high, and that heart symptoms can be, I find they're all in the same circuit, like a breaker in your garage that goes to your kitchen and the stove and the microwave and the dishwasher all in the same circuit you know so if you hit that one breaker all of them turn off <laughs> mm -hmm. and so the, the nerves that leave your spinal column not just don't just control the joints and the muscles they also control the viscera the organs i think like that whole by lats and my multivitous muscles uh -huh. Uh -huh. are perpetually actually tight uh -huh. like for example if i go to the gym and i lift weights and i do lap pull downs uh -huh. the next day I guarantee my lower back starts hurting yeah, they're doing lat pull downs. Because that's locking this. That's all. Any lat pull down, the lats attach at T12. Your trap attaches at T12. Quadrace lumborum attaches at T12. The more this locks, the more this is going to. So what happens is I do a bunch of lat pull downs. Yes, sir. I'll feel it right in here the next day. And, yes, I have, and then I have to do all kinds of stretches, all kinds of lat stretches to get rid of it. Well, right in here. See if I can release some of that tension in here for you. Yeah, that cue balls. Mm -hmm. Right there's a little bit on the attachment there. It definitely feels like it's loosening right now. I can actually even feel it. Mm -hmm. My spine feels different right now. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like you could just go. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm about to do. When <laughs> we're done. <laughs> feels like it's just going to go. Mm -hmm. Unlocking. It feels like it's going to, it's ready to be released almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
need oxygen to contract a muscle. You also need oxygen to relax a muscle. So when an area gets super tight, it won't release itself. You need to actually drive blood into the area to give it the tools so that it can relax. It won't just, that's part of why we're supposed to get a hot shower after we work out, right? Not just so we don't get the lactic acid out, but also that we drive oxygen in to allow the tissue to now relax so it doesn't stay contracted after a workout. Sometimes piriformis gets a lot of press. <laughs> Glute medius gets a lot of press. These muscles can interact with the nerve that travels down your leg. So tightness that, in here. That glute medius does all kinds of things, I notice. Mm -hmm. Especially, it's really good to work it out. Uh -huh. Lift with it, really relieves pain. Right in there, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, gotta release that. Mm. Getting pressure off the lower back is paramount, but then, some, like I said earlier, you need oxygen to relax the muscles, so sometimes you do need to go into the actual area, chiropractor, <laughs> and actually release even though you've done your job as a chiropractor of taking the stress off the lower back, you still need to go into the glute to release the contraction. Mm -hmm. It won't self-relax. If there's no blood flow and the area is in a spasm, you need to drive oxygen into it so it can relax. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it. Does that seem tight or weird? Is or normal? Not, is it not right there? I would say abnormal, but just there's... For an athlete, there's, there's a level of, you know, just like cleaning that's required. You know, you're an athlete, you need to go to a car mechanic more often than a non-athlete. You know, if you're going to mm -hmm. be doing deadlifts and lat pulls, you know, it's like you're uh, off-roading your car. It needs to have the suspension checked out more often. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm -hmm. These are suspension joints in here. These are like tie rod ends and <laughs> if the, you know, they're supposed to be rubber gaskets and the discs represent the rubber. You know, they're, they're cartilage that are supposed to prevent the things that are sensitive from touching each other. And so if the, but that rubber is like, needs silicone grease. It needs, you know, needs lubrication, needs oil from the mm -hmm. blood flow. And so it tends to get dried out if it doesn't have any circulation, if it's tight. So it needs like a little, like Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, a little, mm -hmm. <laughs> little oil can of. So yes, the, the areas need to be rinsed out a little bit. Right there seems like there's a nerve there, like something yep. runs there. Yes, sir. Yep. That seems always been sensitive lately, even on my waist. The sciatic nerve. This is the sciatic nerve travels right through here. This is the, the muscles can interact with the nerve. So you can't have any soreness in these muscles. It's like the nerve had to have a path down to the leg. You understand? And all the muscles that are in its path, if they're contracted and inflamed, they have the ability to irritate the nerve as it... Mm -hmm journeys down into your leg. And so here's the first bottleneck, the first choke point that the nerve can be aggravated in. So tensor fascia lata is right next to glute medius. So you have glute medius here and the muscle, mm -hmm. the, the, the tensor muscle is right here. That's what interacts with the, so it's all in the same circuit here. This is all, you know, all of this tissue here affects that hip. It's so weird. Why is it right here? I rolled it out. You see right here? Uh -huh. Crazy tender. It's like I've been hit with a back. This is the back of the socket here. But We're most commonly... Right here. It, mm -hmm. doesn't, it doesn't hurt there at all. Mm -hmm. And it's really tender on the right side. There's a little bit coming out, but I... <laughs> it's, it's L5. This is... I don't... What happens is when the nerve is upset, the health of this tissue, it becomes a hip problem. I'm not denying mm -hmm. there might be something in here, but it's still all ultimately due to the lower back. Yes, you breathe all right now. Yeah. It's a little tender. Huh? Well, you're doing, if you're doing deadlifts and squats, you're you're pulling on these, right? These are these are mm -hmm. you know uh, anchor points. I'm trying to maintain my muscle mass, so it's well, I do all kinds of lifting. I'm trying to maintain it. Like you were saying earlier to me that when you 14 years ago or so, you know they wanted to put a plate mm -hmm. in here. My point is that everybody wants to do stuff here. I don't, the pain, this pain that you're describing here is not one that the medical world usually will pick on. Do you understand? They're not mm -hmm. going to look at this and go, okay, let's do something. Everybody still wants to just oh, sure. do stuff the money's there. Up. It always is L5 yep. is, is, the, yep. is the bottleneck. Yeah, that's all I think. And there's a little bit. I, th I would say this is more of a tendonitis here. There's definitely. Yeah, it's some tendonitis per se. Right. I got you easy. Good, huh? <coughs> a little bit, uh huh, good. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, okay, all right. needs time. You gotta hold. You gotta hold pressure now. Compress all this out. And every visit we get more and more mobility. Get the idea? Oh. It's all That's so wild. like QL down there is all. So it didn't get us right on this side though. Correct. This the, the, you did the same thing. Yep, the the abuse side. See because you're in you're in right avoidance and you yeah. just you're Compressing and inflaming the side more. Yep. That's where my neck looks weird right there. <laughs> Yo. Oh, there you go. Nice. Okay. Yeah, this toe here and then a little bit under the ball feet yes, is a real nuisance. Yeah, we want to work on um, the, the misalignment we call drop metatarsal. So this is the phalanges, this is the metatarsal. What's happening is your toes are going upwards and the connection between the toe and the metatarsal. Mm -hmm. They call it metatarsal drop and they give metatarsal supports. You want to work on stretching. That's why I'm trying to adjust you. The I correct. Kind of spread that thing apart correct. Like you that. want to spread them apart, but also curl. You want to work mm -hmm. in this direction. Don't do this stuff where you're. This yeah. makes it worse. You want to take the toe, pull, and then try to work the toe this direction. The pain will be in here. It's in here because that's the connection between in the joint here that mm -hmm. will get inflamed. The more the toe hammers, it goes upwards. You know, like you're saying, after injury many years ago, and so there it is. There we go. We got there it. We go. Yeah, it's movable. Just has to need just needs some coercion. Back in the day, they stuck quarters or pitcher right in the joint, by top of the joint, by toe, when I had foot problems in college right. with it. Right, just numb it. Right, I understand. There you go. Yeah, nice. They start here at the bridge of the nose and then go across the face, above the ear, which we'll check your ear in a second. That's one of the things that can influence. But I believe the right upper part of your neck being the biggest, uh, let's say, instigator of why the sinuses won't drain, and that getting your neck healthy, getting the curve in your neck, is going to help your sinuses. Mm-hmm. I've had this done before. Yeah, you just want to, you just gotta work this right here. There here any tension in your face here and just there's little lymphatic tubes that don't have a heart and they are pumped by mobility and so you know, there can be a clog here, but I find the most common you're saying this is where it drains. It goes across the face, above the ear, and then down the back of the neck. And so if it's blocked up here, it'll back up like a toilet all the way back up to our face and then essentially nasal drip and all that. All right, go ahead and tilt your head to the right for me. Tilt right. Uh-huh. Here we go. And then go ahead and tilt to the right. Uh-huh. Yeah. This, this helps to unlock the sinuses. Go ahead and tilt left. Tilt left. Uh-huh. And then tilt left. Uh-huh. Crunchy ears. Yeah. It drains over the back. And so any, if this area back here gets congested or inflamed, it can affect the drain lines. But... I believe your biggest culprit, you understand, is up here. Yeah. That this area affects and then it goes all the way to the face. Work on doing 20 minutes total of time, and that's how we're going to stretch your body open. It's not a race, it's a rally. So you head back and then do a little bit of right rotation, just a little bit. Like that? Yeah, just, and actually just relaxing. You're just not even moving, you're just relaxing your head, using the weight of your head to sink into the, into the dental roll, and then just try to take a nap. You close your eyes and <laughs> let your head relax. If in, if in doubt, just keep your head straight on it. But my point is that for a small period of time, I would like to get a little extra pressure on the right side of your neck until that knot goes in a little more and it, like the drawer levels out and then we just work them both together in. And um, this is how we mold that curve back in your neck. It takes about 20, 20 minute sessions to start this process of introducing the curve to your neck along with obviously getting supple, everything unlocked on the table and they both work together mm -hmm. to improve the, the suppleness. So I should do this every day? Every day, and, and the day is ideal. 
half hour, hour, you know, yeah. before you go to bed, kind of like brushing your teeth. You want to place the spine into the right position and then go to sleep. Over time, there actually is a pillow, so they have a thing called a dental pillow that has a mini version of this in it, and then eventually you'll start with the pillow, and then eventually you actually put this into the pillow. This and is, then, yeah. My neck is too straight, kind of, like too flat. Correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. I see it. Forward, I'll see yeah, we got we to gotta work on the curve in your neck. You're, that's really what you're not... The forward head posture is not what you're dealing with. You're mainly dealing with the latter, the ortho is what we call it, which is the loss of cervical lordosis. And then that transfer of stress is happening to your lower neck, and that's making it easy for the, you know, you move around and you feel the electrical down your arms. I wonder if I jump up and down after this, I'll feel we it. We can drive, yeah, I think we'll, it should be a little bit less, yeah. See if I feel it. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, go ahead and take it for a test drive, see how it feels. You want to do with that? No, 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 see how your body feels. I know you want to so check. Yeah, it feels good. Yep. Let's take it for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do some yeah. track and field. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Tiny bit, it's not as much. Yeah. See, try and then it go in away. Try to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's less. Yeah. I mean, I'll, if I. I'll jump in now. <laughs> I mean, I can. See, I can feel. So when I'm doing this right now, I feel a little bit still in my hands. I mean, I can make it. If I if I put my my arms in a certain position, like right there, I, I can make it zing. Some maybe, people. Maybe it's just maybe I'm hypersensitive. Like right there, this I can. <laughs> I can make it zing right here. If I, and it's not so much pathology, it's just some people's nerves are more, but I definitely, you know, want to take the stress off your lower neck. There is stress on that area. I think yeah. we can open it up.